In this video, I'm going to talk about normalization. So this video is part of a playlist on quantum mechanics. You can find a link to this playlist in the description below. So first of all, let's talk about the wave function and what we can do to the wave function to try and get a statistical interpretation in quantum mechanics. So first of all, if we start with the wave function, we have psi, which is a function of x and t for our purposes, then we know that psi star times psi, that is the amplitude squared of the wave function. And this over here is what we are going to define to be the probability density. We're interpreting this mathematical value as the probability density, and that's going to tell us probabilities once we actually calculate some integrals. So we know that if we have some kind of distribution, so we'll draw a rough little graph over here, we have some kind of distribution, as we talked about in previous videos, that looks like this. We need it to kiss the x-axis at distances far away from the origin, and it can do some interesting behavior over here. And it's, it's a nice continuous function, uh, usually, and it's actually going to give us some meaningful values if we find the area underneath the curve. So uh, if you take some interval a to b, and you consider the area under the curve, that is actually the probability that you're going to find a value in between a and b. So let's have a look at something that's very, very important, which is normalization. So if we write this in terms of uh, the probability, we can actually say that the probability of finding x or measuring x in between the values of a and b, well, that's equal to the integral from a to b of psi squared dx. And keep in mind that psi does have this dependence on x and t, but I've neglected to write that dependence uh, for the sake of short, shorter notation and less clutter over here. So this, this is something we've talked about in previous videos. What would happen if we take a and b and we stretch them out to minus infinity and plus infinity respectively? So what's the probability that uh, x is between minus infinity and plus infinity? Well, we can use the same reasoning over here. And that means that we're going to have to deal with the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of this guy, the probability density, squared dx. Now, let's do a reasonability check, a little gut check, to see what value this needs to be for this to be considered a probability. What is the probability of measuring an outcome? Any outcome. Well, it has to be one, because you're definitely going to get an outcome from your measurement. So this actually has to be one. This value is one, and that is normalization. If the wave function is normalized, it's going to give a value of one. So we have to define our, our wave function carefully so that this integral from minus infinity to plus infinity gives us one. Or in other words, this has to be a square integrable function, which when integrated gives us the value of one. This ensures that the entire area, so all of this area over here, all of this is equal to one. So the area under the curve is one. That means that a portion of this area is going to be less than one. It's going to be somewhere between zero and one. It's going to be a non-negative real number. And that is what a probability has to be. So normalization ensures that we can have a useful statistical interpretation of quantum mechanics. So how would we actually go about normalizing the wave function? Well, we'd have to consider the constants out the front. And there's actually another video in this playlist that discusses that. So first of all, I want to have a look at what is going to happen to the wave function if it's not normalizable, or it's not square integrable. So let's have a look. What we can do is we can examine some uh, possible wave functions, or some possible probability densities, that are going to mess up this entire system. So let's have a look. If we have something that looks like this, or something that looks like this, something where the area under the curve keeps getting bigger and bigger as you go out to minus infinity and plus infinity. 
this is not going to be able, uh, this is not going to be integrable. So you're not going to be able to get a finite value from this. So this guy is not going to be square integrable, and it's not going to be normalizable. What about something that is a constant function, like this? Well, a constant function is going to have infinite area. So the area is not going to converge to a value. That means it's not normalizable. We need something that kisses the x-axis. So that is essentially what we need. That is what's going to allow us to get a normalizable wave function. You can watch the other videos in this playlist by clicking here.